Hi everyone, today we're doing billing on Trihack Me. I've already started the room up, so let's have a look at the end map scan. So we can see we did the service version tag with the common scripts and aggressive on the port for the IP address here. We can see we get three ports open SSH port that we can SSH into and part 80 web server and MySQL opening as well. So let's look at the web server first. Seems like it could have something interesting on. So if we just do part 80, we can see here call on part 80. And we can see we get Magnus billing. First thing I try to do is just do basic admin admin. And then I had a look at the background to see if I could get any service version information. What version of the software is running, but I couldn't get anything. I started to next try to do some basic, you know, SQL injection. I tried to do one at one, a bunch of question marks. But that got me nowhere. So what I did next, I tried to look for a RCE vulnerability. So I did Magnus Billing. You can see here the one I used as well. Magnus Billing, RCE, GitHub. And one of the ones is right here. I used this script. This was pretty good. And this pretty much gave me RCE. You normally wouldn't want to just fire random scripts off until the end. Like, I had no choice but to because I couldn't find anything. So I just hoped this worked and luckily it did. I could have done a bit more enumeration, but I just didn't want to take any more time. Just wasted. So I just wanted to see what I could do. So if we do Magnus, I think it was called exploit. Exploit.py. And if we look here, it'll tell us what it needs. So this is the target the target IP address and our reverse cell IP. So we want to put this in. I'll get that out. So we'll do it on 443 as well. This is going to be our target IP address, which for me is here. For you, it'll be this IP address here. So I'm going to go back here and comment this part out. And I want to put in my own IP address. For me, it's my open VPN IP address, which is on the top right hand corner for me. So if you're using Kali, it should be there for you as well. But if not, you could you you could just do if. I think it's if no, I think it's IP config for Kali, and I think it's if config for Windows. Actually, it's if config for Kali, but you can see here the IP address. That will be your own IP, open VPN IP. So that's mine. Now I'll need to set up a netcat listener. So I'll be doing. LNVP, this will just be listening for under part 443 and that will tell Netcat to look for any connections and connect to it if it gets anything on this part 443 so I'm going to press enter and we can see we've got a connection so if I do PWE, WD, we can see I'm in the directory right here so if I just do home, we do ls, we can see Magnus this terminal is a bit, you know Yuck. So I'm gonna do cat TTY. I won't upgrade to a full TTY shell because I don't want a fully interactive shell right now because I don't really need it for this room. But if you're gonna be opening a terminal editor like nano, you might need to upgrade, but for this room you won't. So if we do ls again, we can see it looks much nicer. So if we do cat user.txt, we can see with the first user.txt flag here. So I originally ran Limpies in the temp directory so I went to temp and I downloaded limpies I had limpies on my box but that showed me nothing so I'm just going to skip that part and just do sudo dash, dash l and we can see we get fail to ban client this is a client that bans IP addresses from like brute force attacks and whatnot this is basically like you can see it's the, it just bans IP addresses that I think is malicious so if we do sudo and we do fail to ban client, we can see we can run it as root without a password, which is pretty good for us, I guess, on our attacker side, so we can abuse this. So if we do sudo, sudo dash l again, we can see we can run fail to ban client. So what I did next, I just googled fail to ban client. I think it's, you can see that's the one I use. So what I did, I did fail to ban sudo fail to ban clients priv esc so privilege escalation and the one i use i looked through all of these and these two weren't that good and that one wasn't that good but this one here was really good exploit notes so we can see here get jail list so if we do this command this will show us our jail list and we can see we'll be using this one as our 
jail, which I'll talk about later, well right now. So we can see choose one of the jails from the jail list in the output and this will be the jail we'll be choosing. All that's important is that it's in this list here, the jail list. So we can see we've got quite a few to choose from. But I'm going to choose this one here. To make things a little bit easier, I'll put this in the corner. So I'll press down arrow and we can see here we want to get the jail list and we want to get choose a jail. So I'm going to choose this one here and put that in. And if I get this all and copy it and put it in, we, sh we can see it. It worked, so we've done that. Now we need to create a new action with a arbitrary name, evil. We'll just use the name evil, but we'll need to set our jail as well. So if we go back here, and we'll change this jail to our jail, which is on the box. So we'll copy this again. Oops, actually let me do this again. So let me copy this again over, it messed up. So if I copy this and control shift C V and copy that excess jail and all you need to do is copy this and put it in here. So we've done that bit, now we need to set a payload. So this is gonna create a, a, an SCUID bit for the bin bash binary. So this will let us run as root. So this will give us a binary bash shell running as root because the fail to ban client is running as root so if we if we create anything with the suid b well d bit the suid bit it will run it as root so let's put that in as well so the last thing we need to do is just put in ban an ip address as well so let's ban an ip as long as it isn't our ip address we can see we're using the ip address 1234 which isn't a real ip address so we'll comment this out again, rinse and repeat, and hopefully as soon as we run over command we should get a shell as root. So if we do bin bash part, we can see we've got a bash shell. If we do id, we can see we're running as root. So if we do cd root, we do ls, we can see we get root.txt here, and we can just do cat root.txt, but I'm going to let you do that on your end. So that's just the room pretty much done, a basic privacy escalation with a vulnerable service.